name is Simon King, and this is What's Wrong. Hey, look what we've got! A whole new place to be! I feel like that should be when the 70s theme song comes in. <laughs> a whole new place to be for you and me, together at last. And also, there's a funny black kid. Um, <laughs> That's how the 70s did sitcoms. They did that. Um, we are here in uh, Secret Base Studios, which we think is Secret Base. Might be Death Trap Studios because there are, we're 12 floors up now. Before, we were only three floors up, which if you threw yourself out the window, eh, especially if you've been drinking, you bounce, right? Yeah. Yep. But now, we're 12 floors up, and if you throw yourself out of this window, you're not going to bounce, right? No, somebody uh, will steal your wallet yeah, that's it. <laughs> from your you will, corpse. You will lie there as the seagulls peck at your slowly twitching body <laughs> yeah. until your eyes... Anyway, enjoy this true crime podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, this is uh, What's Wrong with Simon King. Um, uh, I, I guess I can say, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we've got a spot. We, we're here. If you are listening to this, you could be watching this on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com slash The Citizen Strange. If you are uh, not... Uh, listening to this and you are watching it hey look at this we got a sign I'm not going to tell you what the sign says go to YouTube look it up uh, <laughs> sign. I should change it every week the sign should just be your adjective for the week um, I am uh, I am joined today is, uh, no longer on the road no longer in my 1970s basement I am in the room uh, here with Mikey Greenwood the, um, the vociferous Mikey Greenwood uh, which I believe means uh, meat eating plant and <laughs> And uh, one of my favorite people in the world, a uh, fantastic comedian, uh, legendary comedian. I think we said legendary. Can we say? Le- hold on. Let's, uh, hold on. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's, put a, let's put a sound. <laughs> legendary. <laughs> a legend- <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, legendary. Legendary comedian, uh, voice actor, actor, and uh, all around uh, amazing dude uh, with fantastic beard. Peter Clams, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm uh, honored to be the first guest in the uh, you are. the suicide room. You're the first guest. <laughs> And this is uh, this is the this is what they should do with solitary confinement rooms. Like if they if, they, if, if you're in a state if state that doesn't have death row, be look look it's solitary confinement. We're yeah. gonna leave the windows open. We're twelve floors up. Do what you gotta do. And, then, you, and know? you can't you can't see this, but if you've seen suicide doors in cars, what well, you know that when the passenger the second uh, uh, the backseat doors open towards like the driver's side, yeah. uh, you know out. So people that's why they call them suicide doors. Yeah. They would jump out and get dragged. Yeah. <laughs> To a horrible death. Yeah. And these windows are the equivalent of that where they open from below and something horrible could happen at any point yeah. in time. And, and they're like a great. foot off the and ground. And they are also wide enough for a man of my size. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's unusual. You Normally, they open like a mail slot. And you could, like, if you wanted to, you could drop Tic Tacs right. on people below. Right. You could drop a human baby out of this. Oh, absolutely. And yet, a human legal. person. A human person. Adult. Human yeah. person. Yeah. Human baby who's, uh, who's 45. <laughs> so, I mean, I was I mean, human baby. I didn't say the age of the human baby. I said human baby who is... For- See, this is what I deal with, right? Like, we've been yeah. away from each other for a while. We haven't. When was the last time we were in studio? It was, like, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. And I yeah. come back to this. Sorry. <laughs> Horrible. So, um, yeah, so we're in Vancouver. Yeah, and you're back in Vancouver. Which I am is lovely, and yeah. Yeah, I'm very yeah, I'm very glad that you uh, you uh, are able to be on the podcast because we wanted to have you on for a while. But now, Thank christening you. the new podcast, there's nothing up here because the mural I had commissioned of you mm-hmm. wasn't done. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, right. well, well, we wanted to do it with uh, with fridge magnets that you could change around to make it look yes. like different comedians when they're on. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we couldn't uh, couldn't get the beard right. Yeah, as Th- this they say. is new. I haven't had a beard for a very 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 long time. Looks and good. Then, but I uh, had an audition for a. Uh, uh, guest star role on a tv show and then it's kind of like a double-edged sword yeah you're, you're i got the call and they're like oh my agent's like you got the gig and then i, I yeah. oh, we had a zoom reading and i was like uh so you guys you want me to get rid of the beard no no keep the beard uh, and my wife hates, hates it, it. Hates hates it. it. But so how else are you going to play Perv in Phone Booth? You know? Exactly. <laughs> like, it's Greek, it's, Greek it's, Perv in Phone Booth. Greek Perv in so. Phone Booth. <laughs> yeah, which is much different. <laughs> you, you just, There's garlic involved. You just hang up the phone in a pervy Greek way. I don't know yeah. how that works. What are you waiting? Hold on a second. <laughs> Mitchell. Okay, what, what was this name to you? Pervy Greek Phone Booth. Lovely, beautiful, beautiful woman. See, I, that's the thing with foreigners. They always throw an extra S on there when yes. they shouldn't, right? They're always like, Woman's. you are a beautiful woman. Yeah. Americans don't yes. do that, though, but they're foreigners. <laughs> oh, wait, they call themselves Americans. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. American. <laughs> American. Isn't it American? What's it French? Is it American? American? Isn't that different? Like, for American and American in French are different oh. feminine and masculine, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, know I, don't Mandarin. Know. I don't know. Make Guayen. That's all I know. That's all I know. That's all I got. That's hmm. all I got for Mandarin for you. Sorry you're listening to the <laughs> Let's Learn Mandarin with Simon King <laughs> podcast, and that's all I know. But we're learning together. So, <laughs> how have you been, Mikey? 
I've been good. I've been good. Uh, working a new job at the Fairmont Hotel. Oh, you're still there? Oh, I'm still there. Uh, I haven't left that job after two months, like my last. I was gonna month, say. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm chuffing. You fight along. any rich people yet? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. I, I just, I just, I just prepare the rooms for the house housemates. So that's pretty much what I do. I don't. They tuck me in the back. No one sees. You prepare the rooms? What do you go move mates? any bodies? <laughs> I just take I, uh, out garbage. Someone and better call her family. <laughs> One of the Trump kids was here. <laughs> and, and there's always that one room in every hotel that's like, uh, you don't go up to room 12. Do. <laughs> that's true. Don't go there. Why? Don't you don't talk about and it. That's, and that's where they send you day one. That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not yeah. a ghost. It's just an old lady who can't check out. She just forgot <laughs> yeah, how to check out. She's just 101. We do have a resident. I'm not sure if I can even say that. But there is someone like living at the hotel right now. I it's like five like, to $600 a night. And she's and just, just living, living at a hotel. Just wow. living at a Fairmont. Yeah. I used to work at the Western Bayshore in my uh, youth. Okay. Uh, for quite, for years, I, I worked there, and then they had the Howard Hughes suite, and then one time I had to go up there for whatever reason, and I was like, "Now this isn't named specifically for him," and they're like, "Yes, yeah, he has moved place. to Vancouver." <laughs> When he was in his crazy, you know, I, I'm going to stay in bed all day and my fingernails are a foot long yeah. stage. Collecting jars yeah. of pee. Right, yeah. That, so like, that most, like most <laughs> so he was, so he was, kind of he was here for uh, a sizable amount of time. Really? And his suite uh, faced the North Shore, like the mountains. It was right up, uh, it was like waterside kind of suite. And that's where it was for God knows how long. Wow. Really? It's it was else. weird. Another weird one when I was there, I, we were. it was the executive suite. And it was huge, and they used to have parties there sometimes but when very wealthy people came in. Yeah. And we had to clear the people who were staying there's uh, belongings out because there was a party, and they, and they were going to put it back in the next day. So I, they go, you know whose who's luggage that is? And I'm like, who? Tra- John Travolta's. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what they expected me to do with that. <laughs> That's so like, fun. holy shit. I am yeah. touching John Travolta's gaunch. <laughs> Look at that. My just fingers full of, are all over just that shit. Full of wigs, dildos, and yeah. Yeah. thermometer. You don't things know what that. it is. <laughs> That's such hotel conversation. They yeah. love telling you, you know like famous that. people's luggage. They've like, luggage. You know whose room I cleaned? Shakira. No, Very but it's clean a person. badge of yeah. honor. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Came in one time and uh, just lying on the bed there. John Hamm, rose yeah. in his teeth. Nothing else yeah. going on. Yeah. Apparently, he just does that. So, yeah. <laughs> There's a picture of Bill Clinton right in the in the like. Headquarters of well, the like for drinking a picture of Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, picture. Like, it's just <laughs> it's just like lemonade and yogurt. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, Jesus Christ! But Bill Clinton in '97 was going out the secret entrance, and all the housemates saw him. He's like, "How about a group photo with all the housemates?" And there's like a picture with him and like 50 women. It's what the right. fuck? <laughs> want to take a, 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 you want to get your photo taken with a war criminal? Fuck yeah! <laughs> this was '97 though. That was like peak Bill, right? Peak 97? Bill. Yeah. Like, peak no, Bill. that's when he was just all saucy with the ladies. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> no, every, no, I know people. Yeah. He was here for uh, I forget what event was here, but he did come into town. I remember yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And I forget Clinton's who was, who was with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I forget they they were at a, in a function with him at the hotel, and I forget who it was, but he was with uh, another executive female friend of his who was very attractive, and he said <laughs> Clinton. They were all ready to wrap up, and all of a sudden Clinton just laser beamed over to her, and he was like, "We're standing twenty five twelve. Come on, Bob, say hi to us." And he's like, she's like, yeah, this is in front of everybody. We all like, just saw you do he's this. He's like, I'm the president. That's what he I do. It was, yeah, yeah. He's he's weird too because he's gone like he's gone all very like he's all really thin now. He is. Is that old thin guy look? Yeah. That old thin guy look is an odd look. Like I'm a chubby dude, but I like it because it makes me look young. And so I watched that show alone. Do you see that show alone? Where they, they, they yeah. oh yeah fuck yeah off yeah people into the wilderness yeah. And you can always tell they're losing too much weight because they start to look fucking old. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, that's not good, man. No. Yeah. Like, if you look too too thin, you look old. Like, yeah. I think, I'm just saying, Jennifer Aniston fat would look like she's 20. Yeah. She already looks like she's 30. I'm just taking yeah. 10 years off. Yeah. Have some stickers. Yeah. Jennifer, <laughs> if you're listening, you know, The Rock fat? Fat Rock would be great, though, wouldn't he? Yeah. Just doesn't give a fuck one day. Just shows up. Fuck it. You know what? Like, Salma Hayek was always curvy. And, yeah. it, and she's, in, I think, at 50 now or maybe a older. little bit more. Older. And she still looks fantastic. fantastic. Oh, yeah. I got fantastic. to work with her once. Huh? Did you? What? Yeah. I, uh, here's the thing. I don't know why. I, you know, it's one of these things that... You didn't uh, open with that. We've been talking for <laughs> no. 15 fucking no, minutes. It's, I would oh, open yeah. I work with Selma Hayek. I would meet strangers. Hey, how are you doing? I work with Selma Hayek. I work with Selma Hayek. Where, where's my sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Where's my sandwich? No, it's one of those things where, you know, the guys are sitting around. It's like, oh, man, you know, who do you think is hot kind of thing? Yeah, and, I, yeah. and it was this one year where I thought, 
I, randomly, I was like, oh, um, Angelina Jolie and Salma Hayek, I think, were just my two choices yeah. of uh, beautiful women. Yeah, great choices. And within eight months, I got to work with both of them. What? <laughs> on two completely unrelated projects. Wow. wow. And one of them was, uh, I got a call. I was dri- I remember to this day, I was driving over the Bart Street Bridge. Agent calls, and he goes, uh, he was this agent. Uh, Robert Carey is his name. He's since retired, but... Uh, I know it, that it, name. It, yeah, he's uh, he had this very effeminate accent when he called like a very disinterested kind of <laughs> you would look forward to him calling and yeah. he never said bye he never said bye he was oh, like well you're supposed to be there at 2 p.m hey. <laughs> hello hello like Where he's am I fucking going? ransoming someone's yeah. daughter <laughs> and, and he was my he was my agent for like 17 years fantastic never so say he goodbye calls, he called no no never say goodbye if you ask anybody who was represented by him he, that's what he would I do I wonder what his eulogy will be yeah. like Robert <laughs> And it's just like that'd be perfect. Always, it's perfect. Nailed it. And he would always kind of throw this kind of backwards insult at some, like one one time this female actress friend of mine who's fantastic <laughs> called her up and he goes, "Well, I got some feedback from the audition," and he'd say things twice at the end. Uh, when they said you have a long face, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long face. Oh my god! It was a pause, and then he'd say it again in case she weren't uh, didn't accept the insult. <laughs> Um, where was I going with this? That's so, the only time so Robert, very, that's the only business. Sorry, but this is the only business in the world you're allowed to say that to an employee or someone you work <laughs> yeah. with. You can't fucking just walk into the stables break room and go, Sally, you have no. a long face. Yeah, they, long won't face. Buy, <laughs> they won't buy that whole punch up you because you have a they long face. And then you leave, but in and the entertainment, it's like, you didn't get the job because your face is weird. <laughs> it's fucking leave. He would always say, you should, you, should, you should take a workshop. Like, if anything bad will happen, workshop. he would suggest a workshop to correct that issue, right? You're, like, you're just like, oh man, I forgot my line i felt bad well you should take a just how to memorize your line workshop <laughs> anything though do you ever anything. take that like, do you I, ever know, take that personally like because no, i had, no, that, no, I had not, someone say that, that to me know. once not that i know him now i had to i had, to, I had someone say that to me once and it was a, an agent that i didn't did, didn't know me it was the first mm-hmm. time i'd ever worked it was an agency in the states and, and I, my lead agent was not sitting yeah. on this yeah and it was a it was a second callback for something yeah. so like we're almost got it yeah and they're like yeah just Maybe we should take acting lessons. I'm like, motherfucker, oh, I almost we, booked this. We, and we, we, like, we are not doing that. And then, and then, you know, he's got like a brochure. I also, my brother teaches acting. <laughs> like, anyway, sorry, I don't want to interrupt your no, son. No, no, no. But with, no, with, with, back to Robert, though, he would, it, Lauren, I want to say it would be anything. Like, I remember one actor was just like, oh man, I went to set, I just ate way too much off of the, uh, the craft service table. <laughs> well, you should take a donate too much off the craft service table workshop. <laughs> It was always the workshop he'd recommend. So, I like the idea that that workshop exists. That exists. it's just a bunch of teamsters exists. sitting around. Just sitting around. Listen, I want to eat that, but I'm not going to. I want Am the I? gen truck. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then. He's got handfuls of Skittles. Anything with Del Monte. Go to town. Do you yeah. think him um, not saying goodbye was like a, a power move that he read once? I was d- like it was just disinterest. An power Complete move? disinterest. <laughs> he was finished his thought and then the conversation was over. That's that is like that does terrify me though, because like I'm such an overly cordial person because I'm afraid of offending yeah. anybody. And yet someone just does that. And he's like and just walks have you ever had that when you're talking to someone they just walk away? Yeah. And you're just like, What the fuck? What happened? Like, hey, well, that'll shake me for a week. Mm-hmm. Like I swear to fucking God. Because it's one thing if you walk someone in your audience. Because you still got yeah. 99 or 199 or whatever people there. But if you yeah. walk a person you're talking to and they yeah. just fucking nope and they leave and you're like, how did I do that? Like, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think that's a power though, isn't it? Like I, a superpower. I, I think so. I don't, it wasn't for him. It wasn't personal. It was just that that was a personality. And like I say, everybody in the agency, I remember doing uh, they had agency Christmas parties and I would go up and imitate him in front of him and everybody else, <laughs> right? And, and, but, and they would just be but dying. But I guess he didn't get it. That no, is. no. He, he, he loved it. He yeah. loved it, yeah. or at least he pretended he did. He pretended he loved it. <laughs> but he was great. But this, this is all. I haven't gotten yeah. over the bridge no. in yeah. the story. Yeah. You're still on the bridge. So he called. I get a call from Robert. <laughs> well, you, they just you're working with Angelina Jolie. They saw your tape and they want to book you. I'm like, oh wow. Well, that's what. <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and then I, uh, I got to go to. I worked with her for like four days, and she couldn't what have been it, more. What was the project? Uh, Life or something like it. Life or something. So her like and Ed Burns. Oh, Ed Burns. Oh, where she had the big blonde Ed wig, and and oh, yeah, she was a news yeah, yeah. reporter, and Tony Shalhoub. Were you in like scenes in with her or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. She a nice person. She was wonderful. Yeah. And um, she very small. 
She seems small. She's uh, very petite, like size wise. Very. <laughs> Why smart. did I say it like that? Like, <laughs> no, she's not. She's not necessarily short. <laughs> like I'm judging seafood. She's no, small. No. I think she's probably like five, seven, five, eight. She's not short. Short. Five, well, I'm six uh, four. Very so petite. for me, we're <laughs> very petite. Very petite. And, and, yeah. Yeah. She seems tiny. She seems like she. She probably weighs about eighty pounds carrying a transmission. Like she does. She, look she's very thin, but not yeah. like uh, grotesquely thin. She's. It looks she's like just, she's in just incredible shape. Incredible shape naturally. Yeah. And like, but seriously, good. Like gorgeous and. And extremely nice and wow. there you go. And it's then nice with the Salma Hayek, I auditioned for this role and uh, it was called. Uh, what did the end? They ended up changing the name, but it, uh, Big Shiny Enemies was the name. It and uh, well, Steve cool Zahn was like the main oh, lead, who is fantastic, Zahn, yeah. right? But she then, sounds fucking great. Yeah, and the, but then I got to go to a read through out in Burnaby or something, and I didn't think the main people were going to be yeah, there. But then I walk in and she's like oh hi I'm Salva nice to meet you like, I've always <laughs> wanted to go to Burnaby she's just touched her she's always just she's never gonna secret. wash his hand the again Burnaby is her bucket list city yeah. I've always wanted to go to Bur- growing up I wanted to go to Burnaby to Burnaby so nice <laughs> See, that's the thing is like I was thinking because I've I've met a few uh, famous people. They've always been nice, with very few yeah. exceptions. And, and 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 pretty much everyone that I know that is like successful. Like, you told me this once. It's yeah. like it's like usually the people with talent are just nice because they're not worried. Yeah, they're not, they're not scared. About it. They're just like yeah. No, I mean it, it's different when you talk about like what you've you know career accomplishments and stuff. That's, yeah. But but outside of that. <clears throat> Sorry, I got choked up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll just get really weepy for no yeah. reason, and then I just immediately walk out before I finish my thought. I'm like, what the fuck? But like, I, yeah, you're right. Like, I found that in my time, the people that are the most talented are just the nicest people because they just Absolutely. really aren't scared. Because there's no, you, you don't have to be scared of other people in the business because no. you're all doing your own shit. Exactly. Like, I never understood with comedians. Like, the idea is to be comedians, particularly, is like you're you're supposed to be unique. That's your mm-hmm. thing, and yet. Mm-hmm. All they do is like compare themselves to other people. I'm like, and, it, and it's easy to do, but it just seems like so counterproductive. Yeah. Right? It's like it's like I mean, I, I I never understood like actors and stuff. Yeah. I get like, you know, you go in for the same role and you don't get the same role and everything. Sure. But that's that one project, and you just move on, right? Right. Like, I, I think acting like I'm I'm very like because you do a lot of acting and I'm like I I dabble. I don't do much because it always seems to me like it's such a it's so dependent on like. The right people having the right vision to see you in the right spot, doing the right thing. It's like this because yeah. they walk in with a thing in their head, mm-hmm. and you could be the best actor in the world, and it doesn't fucking matter if it's not the thing in their head they no, want. No, if it's so not what they're me. what they have envisioned. Yeah. But all you can do is your version of that read. Yeah. Um, like, I, I have friends of mine. A lot of times, I go up for the same role as them. And I'm not necessarily worried about it. I don't think they're worried about me doing it either. Yeah. Um, because it's like they're going to do it their way. Yeah. And I'm going to do it my yeah. way. And ultimately, we don't have a choice as to what they choose. Yeah. Uh, at the, in the uh, for the end product. Well, you told me that with voice work too, because uh, yeah. Clem- Peter is a very, very, very successful voice actor, and I'm trying to get into it, and I'm not. You know, because uh, nobody wants a podcast voice. They don't want this voice. <laughs> so hey, you guys like muffins, huh? Hey, muffins! <laughs> hey, actually, I would totally buy muffins if I could. I would hey, buy a muffin you from you that guy. Muffins, yeah. hey, yeah. Have a, have a big old fucking muffin. And <laughs> that's, that's like uh, Muffin World. Muffin that would world. be the ad for Come Muffin to World. Muffin World! You want chocolate chip? Uh, yeah. We got chocolate chip! Blueberry, 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 garlic? Why not? Fuck it. It's Muffin World. And. <laughs> it comes out of Muffin World. And uh, make sure you throw out the paper! Anyway, it's Little Havana. <laughs> <Muffin> <laughs> World, apparently. What's going on? Come on down and you'll have the cinnamon. <laughs> and the, and but you told me that. You said to me, it's like, it's like uh, they're going to write what they want, just do what you think. And your interpretation. Answer, you're better of it. off. Yeah. But, yeah. And it's true. Because a lot of times they'll be like, you know, like Matthew McConaughey, but not. Also, like, kind of like Zach Elephantakis, oh but Seth Green, <laughs> with a little bit of Jack Black. And if you could put uh, Freddie Mercury in there, and you're like, what the fuck do you <laughs> want? Oh, yeah. Like, what yeah. do you want? It's just a blender full of stew. And, and then you yeah. just do a regular read. You're like the new Nissan Sentra, and they're like, "Yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> Ninety, like any of those. Ninety-nine percent, ninety-nine point nine percent of the time, if they're ever doing an ad for radio, they will say written there. It says, "We not announcery, not a natural." Ever. And when it comes out, it's guaranteed. Always announcery. It's like, you know, they never want an announcery, and then you hear it. It's like, "Come on down, little super <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And it's so I funny read for the shit. Do, yeah, they I, said not to do that. Yeah, and you send in what you think is a good read, and even your agent's like, "That's a really good read." It's a really good read, and it never shows up. And no. then you listen to it, and it's like, "Come the Specsavers, Specsavers on Sunday." You're like, "That's, that's a fucking, it. That's a fucking." 
It's an answer that you didn't I like, want. I like so many times too. Like I'll just do, I'll, I'll do too many takes or something. Like sometimes yeah. I'll do the first take and I'll be like, that's it, and send it out. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, oh. but a lot of times I'll just do too many takes. I'll just get in my own head about it, and then I'll yeah. just be like, now yeah. I'm just doing an impression of the first take I did 20 takes ago, and now I have no yeah. idea what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. I don't know why it's happening. I'm just confused. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. asked to do a, a Michael Caine thing once, and I didn't have a Michael oh, Caine cool. impression at the time. Cool. And um, it's this guy named Richard Coyne. He's a fucking fantastic performer uh right. shout out to richard coin right. and uh he asked me he's like can you come can you do some voice work stuff for me for a live show and i was like yeah yeah, yeah. man i was like oh, you know i can bang he's like impressions i'm pretty sure i can get it i got most yeah. of them well the one impression i never bothered with because everyone has one was michael kane <laughs> he mm -hmm. sent me this stuff and it's great it's funny but it's like he's talking about the movie cats and it's like he has to sing and all of a sudden oh, i'm like man. jesus fucking christ i can't even do the voice <laughs> I must have done that for three days because <laughs> every time I listen oh, to him, like it just sounds like you're doing Michael Caine. <clears throat> right. Like you're getting your own head about it, you know. I like though it, it, doing a lot of voices and impressions. Yeah. Uh, as you do, also, uh, is sometimes you get asked to for auditions to do something oh. or a voice match, sounded and you're like, like, yeah, sounded like, and I'm like, I have never attempted that yeah. before. I don't know how to how to do it. And for me, I kind of love it because I I find doing a impression well is like figuring out a the fucking code to a bank vault oh yeah because yeah. there's always wow. a certain thing yeah and that that just makes it gold yeah and sometimes you're listening to that person and you don't think anything's there until somebody does it yeah and i know this is an exaggerated uh, version of that but you know like dana carvey doing the old george w it's like not yeah. gonna die yeah. But, yeah. but he hit that line with the thing and the and the hand move and all that and this, everybody's like oh my god that's hysterical yeah. yeah so one time i had to i got requested to do uh steve buscemi no oh, for a disney video that's game tough. for the for monsters university video yeah, game yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. and i'm like ow oh. i'm like jesus so i did i just kind of studied uh buscemi and then something clicked, and I go, he has too many fucking teeth in his mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, you told me he this, has and you're too right. Many, he's got two or three too many teeth. teeth too many, and he doesn't really open his mouth well, because yeah. there's so many fucking teeth in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, what are you talking about? That's not what I'm fucking saying to you. <laughs> And, and I got the gig, and I'm like, yeah, okay, well, shit. that was the... Uh, so you're clenching your teeth? You're clenching kind of your like, teeth. Like, what the fuck are you saying This me? is a funny thing, is that's exactly the opposite way of... W in my instinct was to go nasal, because... Yeah. Hey, kids. So it could be up here, but... Oh, my God. For me, it's... But it, for you, it's teeth. It no, it makes more in sense. The teeth. Yeah. And the funny thing is, so I just had someone uh, message me, and they were like, uh, they're auditioning for this thing where they go mm -hmm. play John Lovitz. Uh, but young John right. Lovitz. Right. <laughs> and they're like... Can you help me do this? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I mean, John Lovett, yeah, sure, why not? That's an easy impression to do. I like it. But it's like <laughs> conversational or performative. Right. It's like, so That's what I he would tried do. to yeah. explain to him. I was, like, I was like, there's a big difference between talking like him or talking like him. And right. so the word you have to find is hello. And it's That's like, right. you can find that word. Hello! <laughs> and he would just launch with certain words that it were would just land. would harm the town to hear it. And so it's like I tried to explain to him. I was like, I was like, take a John Lennon. I was like, do a John Lennon, and then throw Billy Crystal on it, and then yeah. pull back the nasal, and that seems to be oh. it. And the fucker sent me the thing, and he's nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit! Yeah. I was like, I was That's like, and he's obviously very talented, and I really didn't do much. But I'm like, fuck! I didn't know you could teach an impression. Right. Like, I, like, That's can nuts. I get some arugula? Hello, <laughs> hello. You're listening hello. to Lovitz cast. That's right. <laughs> all love it all the time. <laughs> I, I had to do a Lennon once, and it was a, uh, I forget what the project, but it was a big, it was a Beatles documentary type movie or something, and I don't know if it ever got made, but it was a big name involved. It was like, it was like fucking Oliver Stone or something Oh, really? Crazy. Holy shit. So I remember I, uh, again, studied the Lennon for quite a while, and I mean, there's so much archival footage that there's yeah. lots to choose from, but the one that... I kind of played out in my head a lot was the uh, he goes well I never I never said we were better than Jesus <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I never said that I was like you know there's Jesus and I never I never said we were better I never meant to mean that we were better than Jesus <laughs> yeah you know? that's fucking nailed it ironically that's the phrase I used when I was talking <laughs> to Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, kind of had to do that it yeah. is BC Day today, but I keep putting AD <laughs> on my checks. Anyway, um, where are we at for time, Mike? Here we, uh, we're good. We're good. We're about 25. Okay, so yeah. we, and, okay, and, I'll let you know. When and we're... there's always certain um, accents that I could never get. Like South African, I could never New get. Zealand. It's New yeah. Zealand. It's the it's same New accent. New Zealand, and then with Dutch when, on when it. District 9 came out, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, then I'm getting a good listen yeah. to it. And then You know who does that is Ivan Decker does a great 
Does uh, he? Great New Zealand. Does and then he, he flips over to Ivan. Yeah, it's, I, I firmly believe that most people can do impressions. They just don't know. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and it's like most people do impressions pretty well, but just a few. Yeah. And people like yourself and me can do a lot well. And that yeah. really is good for our business. Because yeah. like I can't, like some impressions I do better than others. But most impressions I can kind of get away with. Mm-hmm. And then that's all you need. But the problem is too, is like what people in an audience think someone sounds like. And what they, right. like so my Schwarzenegger is like this. This is how he sounds. He talks like this now. He's old, you know. He's, he is. <laughs> That's not what they want to hear. They want to hear this guy. That's that that he sounds yeah. like. He's out there talking about horses. <laughs> that's that's what he's like. The Schwarzenegger. Sorry, I got to do a movie that he was starring in. Really? Uh, uh, called uh, Killing Gunther, and it was the guy. Oh from, yeah, 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 yeah. From Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Taron Killam and uh, Bobby Moynihan. I had a bunch of scenes with Bobby Moynihan, which, which is kind of a dream country. He was the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. But and I never had any one-on-one scenes or involved uh, scenes with Schwarzenegger but I was on set once and then people were like oh no he's here like he's got a scene to do and he was supposed to be like uh, no lines he's kind of improvising these two dead bodies and yeah. placing them and joking around while he's doing it and I was in the other room watching on the monitor Yeah. Um, but somebody told me they go yeah yeah he showed up with like his I don't know, bodyguard. And I'm like, what is he needing a fucking bodyguard for? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, it's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who's taking a swipe at that guy? Yeah. <laughs> but then his bodyguard is wearing a Terminator t-shirt. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why is that fucking necessary? Like he's going, hey, do you remember the movies that I did? That <laughs> that one. I did that one to be did a few of those. Predator on the Thank back. Thank you for that. <laughs> no he's like, this guy's just a walking yeah, billboard. He's like, what that's else how he got hired to start up the job interview. Yeah, the movie. Yeah, that was sure. a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, put on your uh, put on your nine months hat. <laughs> no, yeah. what's that, big Mr. Dead? What was I in? <laughs> what was it? When I did that Arnold Schwarzenegger podcast, I realized that I didn't know that much about Arnold Schwarzenegger. So like, we had <laughs> guests on who would ask me questions about my career, and then I would just feign civility. <laughs> You know that movie that they was in with George Clooney when I was the, when I was the ice man like that wasn't it? Yeah, that one. <laughs> I, I no played the Maverick. Yeah, and was, I was, was, fly the could jet. you imagine him in all those and movies? Shoot the, the buildings. No, you didn't. That was not you. I think hey, you. Look, look, look for the T-shirt of the guy next to me. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> you can't handle it. the truth. You can't handle it. <laughs> how long does it yeah. take for you guys? To, when you st- you said you studied Steve Buscemi, how long does it take yeah. for you to pick like? Do some impressions you don't need to study as long, some come quicker. Mostly or like- for me, it's like immediate because it's like either I kind of get them or I don't. You kind of yeah. roll with it. And a lot of times, yeah. it's situations with friends where they go, they mention somebody and you just launch. Yeah. And you're like, uh, oh, okay, I guess I got that. Well, you're the you reason I can do a John C. Riley because you mentioned John C. Riley and the way you right. said it, I was like, oh man, that, hey, hey. <laughs> Wow. All of a sudden, yeah, man. No, I can do that. Sure, like it's just <laughs> yeah. like you're just like it's because it's up in front, and then that's like, and then someone told me Gordon Ramsay is whisper, and as soon as they said that, all right, and as soon as they said yeah. that, I was like, fuck yeah, like yeah. It, because that's the piece that's missing. Yeah. Because you watch them and you go, I can do all the voice, I can do the accent, I can do all the voices, but I can't figure out why I can't make it work, and it's like yeah. a tent pole in the middle, like right. all right, big man, and it's this, uh, like yeah. <laughs> uh, like I, I, I did a and fuck. <laughs> I did a podcast with uh, my buddy David Blue, who was uh, one of the lead actors on Stargate Universe in, in L.A. And he had a oh, podcast, yeah. and he had a bunch of voice people there, and he invited oh, me to join. You told me about this. Yeah, Russ Marquand, right? R- Russ Marquand was one of the guys there, and I just met him. This is prior to him getting getting uh, Walking Dead, but he... He, that, he fired out the John C. Riley there, and I was hey, just like, right, man. Jesus. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to gonna break it down. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like a drunk Grover. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> right? like, like you take Hank Hill and make him more stupid. Yeah. And, wow. yeah. yeah. and Jim Mescalin was there, who was another. Oh, fuck. I know that dude. He's amazing, br- brilliant too. Brilliant yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. And he fired out a Tommy Lee Jones, and yeah. I just looked at him, and I was just like, <laughs> yeah. You just fucking channeled him out of your mouth. Yeah. Like I've some, never it's funny thought in, in anybody could do that voice. In stand up, I can watch someone have a beast of a set, and yeah. I don't feel small. Like I feel like, all right, I got to work. Like I yeah. get that. Like yeah. I don't feel outmatched. I feel like outworked. Yeah. But when I see someone do impressions, that I feel outmatched. Impression. I feel like, immediately. I feel like, yeah, yeah no, wow. I can't. I can't because like I've got a few that I know are better than others. Yeah. Like, what's your favorite one to do? Never mind best. What's your favorite one to do? Oh man. Like if you just pull one out of part, it doesn't matter if it's something everyone does or whatever. Just just one that you're like, this is the funny to me. This is the most fun, relaxing voice to do. I like doing right. this. It's just silly. Fuck. Why is that question just stumped me so much? I did. Because right? you got a fucking uh, I do, I do a bunch. Yeah, right, yeah, there's yeah, Rolodex, yeah. but but. Um, I gotta think about that. I don't yeah. really know. Do you it's, have one, Simon? 
Uh, well, my fa- my favorite one to do, but I don't do a lot, is Robin. And the reason I don't do it a right. lot is because it will take over your whole body, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and your face I, changed. I, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, totally, you know? <laughs> and your yeah. lips and you fuck. You know? And yeah. all of a sudden you move weird, and you know, hello, how are you? <laughs> like, fuck. And because, you know, you become that guy. Uh, why, why would you become that guy? And you gotta do all his horses. Fuck. <laughs> hello, Mikey. How are you? Sitting in the corner. Okay. <laughs> and so the problem is, is like, when you start doing that, you just become him. Yeah. And then the problem is, is like, if you do one enough, my favorite one to do that's not that great that I do for the fuck of it is Burr. Like, right, dude, right, 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 right. Like, right. dude, like, why? Like, I just do it. <laughs> it's just, because no, to me, you, it's like such an accent one, right? Yeah. It, and you have uh, more than a few where it's like fucking uncanny level perfection. Oh, I don't know. I mean, no, 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 you do. <laughs> and, and even not all of them necessarily famous yeah. ones, but when you do Chris Gordon, I can't fucking breathe. Yeah, right? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then, how y'all doing it? Yeah. Like, yeah, there's this famous, yeah. this famous story as uh, when we've tried to convey it oh, to uh, who? Who are we telling? It was um, uh, Novak. Uh, Casey Novak. Casey Novak. And she did not let me forget this for a fuck. We were out there with a bunch of. So for anyone yeah. who doesn't know, Chris Gordon hasn't been on the podcast yet. Look him up. Hilarious comedian. Hilarious. Um, he is one of the one of the best nicest people in the world. He also happens to be a fucking brilliant comic and a giant child. And, like, right. like and, giant, and nuts. Not giant in, by like, the, the sense of like way. he's also he's like six foot one and like two fifty. Like he's just gigantic. And then. <laughs> We went to Las Vegas together. What? Right. The, the three of us, they, you're, you visited me in L.A., and we were like, on the spur of the moment, we're like, yeah. let's go to Vegas. You had never been to Vegas. Yeah, I'd never been to so well, we Vegas. I, well, I went once, but I'd never had fun. I was yeah. there for work. It's so, like the first act of a movie. Like, yeah. 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 Actually, it was a shitty hangover. And I, <laughs> and I had... I it's had, the hungover. We had like an SUV, a SUV. My wife wasn't there at the time, so it was just like I was riding solo. Uh-huh. And you guys dropped in, and we're like, it was we literally. We showed up at your house, yeah. And then you made us dinner, and we got. Drunk. I made dinner, yeah. And then, uh, and then we had a rental car. We had a Honda Civic rental car because Gordon oh, and I could drive yeah. it. You couldn't drive it, and so right. you were in the back. You were in the back, and Gordon and I were in the front. And our yeah. our idea was, we'll go. We'll get a, uh, a room at the Hooters Casino. Because it's just off the strip. It was thirty nine dollars. Thirty nine dollars. Thirteen bucks Th- each. Thirteen bucks each. <laughs> we're not, and we yeah. figure we're not. Now look here. Here's my experience with Las Vegas, right? Like I know yeah. it's it's a long game. This is a marathon, right? So I figure we will get this hotel. We're not even going to be in that long, right? Yeah. Pretty good. Couple yeah. of queen beds. We're fine. Just off the strip. So we drive all the way to Vegas. Having yeah. a great time. Fucking great time. fun. Great, I, uh, great time. I poorly do your uh, crazy chicken bit. Yeah. It's fucking fun. Yeah. We get to Vegas. Chris Gordon has never been before. Chris Gordon is a big man who does not handle alcohol well. <laughs> yeah. So me and him plant uh, yeah. our asses. Well, we before that we had one Bud Light. What I remember this because oh, the only fucking drink I had yeah. all night. We oh. had one Bud Light when we because it was a yeah. dollar, yeah. and we were on our way down a to the dollar. casino. Yeah. Was and, a buck. I, and she's like, hey, Bud Light," and I was like, "Yeah, fuck, it's water. I'll hydrate." And we had a beer, and then on the way through, we passed that tracksuit store, and the idea oh, yeah. was that one of us would win enough money to buy everyone matching tracksuits. Matching suits. tracksuits. That was our goal. That was our goal. Yeah. And I had some friends that were. I had a friend, a couple of friends in town at, at Caesar. So I thought these Calamus, you're a good gambler. Uh, not, Gordon, not bad, yeah. Gordon never gambles. No. And so Gordon doesn't drink that much. We drinks, but he doesn't drink spirits. Right. So you and him <laughs> sit, we sit down at the table, and I don't know if at Gordon the wild knew. Or whatever the fuck uh, it I think was. the four. And I was gone at this point. Yeah, the four feathers, or I can't remember what the name of the place was. Right? <laughs> it was probably like an old Billy Barker or something. Yeah, shit. but it was, a, it, was a, it was a lower end <laughs> casino, and that's yeah. where we landed yeah. at the table. And I don't know if Gordon knew or not, but it's like when you're playing, liquor, liquor's free. <laughs> and he's oh, like, he's oh, buddy. Buddy. He's drinking <laughs> quads. So we were drinking doubles or triples, and he didn't know how to play. I, I kind of <laughs> did, and, and we got on a bit of a roll. When, I, when I left, money. here's what I, oh, when yeah. I left, yeah, Calamus <laughs> was on one side and yeah. Gordon was on the other, yeah, and they were sober, and I was gone for not forty five minutes, not long, <laughs> and I'm like, that's a stretch, forty five minutes, because the yeah. person I was going to see, the people that were going to see, but not there, so yeah. I came back over, and when I got back, Calamus <laughs> is up a shit ton, <laughs> Gordon yeah. is broke, and and. 
talking to guys in cowboy hats <laughs> yeah. about yeah. moving in with them and being their kid and yeah. how he wants them to be the, his yeah. dad yeah, yeah. and then tried to grab the cards at one point from right. the dealer and I and then, said yeah. that's you can't do that and yeah. <laughs> so what happened have another drink. don't you get I shot know, if you do that I've I've yeah, 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 so good. what happened when I left like I left what we were ordering doubles or triples but then even after when you got back though it's like it was doubles or triples and they just kept coming and then we were going kind of up and down so when you go up a little bit you get excited you're like another drink (laughs) you know and jesus yeah we got drunk really hard really fast and by the by the time you were there and then you're like looking how pathetic we were and then you left for again a bit yeah and came back and then gordon had gone up like it wasn't a lot it was like 80 bucks but he might might as well have won the powerball he went out of his fucking mind I that went is. to watch actually a legitimate Filipino Elvis. And that's what I went because oh, yeah. there was Why Filipino Elvis you? in the lounge. Why and I was like, I'm you? not fucking watching these guys. <laughs> no. Because right now, I rea- immediately, I, when I came back, I realized, oh, great, I'm the grown up now. Like, because I was yeah. pacing myself. I was going to start drinking. This is 7 p.m. Like, yes. this isn't like 11 at night. This Just is like 7, seven thirty, And I was like, I was like, because me thinking, I'm like, I'm going to be up till 4. I'm going to start drinking hard around 9. Yeah. And then, nah, fuck it. Fuck it. So, I come back and they're just. Gordon's red. He's yeah. bright red. And now we're hungry. And I was like, I know a place. Right? Oh, this is how I got out. Of, before he said this, this is how I got out of here. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Gordon stood up, and you're like, you need to get him out of here because he's grabbing the cards. Oh, I was like, yeah. Okay. So Gordon yeah, stands I, up, right. and he goes to, goes to Sam. I go, Gordon, I'm going in the washroom. I'll be two minutes. I got to go pee. I'll come out. I came out. Couldn't fucking find him. Couldn't find right. him fucking anywhere. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like 250. And out of nowhere, these arms grab me and just pick me up and carry me out like a fucking suitcase. Like, people were laughing. This, he just carried me out. He's terrifyingly strong. Like, like, and just outside. And then I realized how drunk and sweaty and red Gordon is. And he's so strong. I'm like, thank God he's on our side. And oh, so man. you're like, we got to go to Earl of the Sandwich. Earl of Sandwich. It's a sandwich place. I can't remember which casino it's in. Earl right of now, Sandwich? Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> and it's like, it's kind of like a subway, and you go along the. Yeah. The, the 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 row and you pick your your sides and all that and they make but it's a fantastic sandwich and Earl makes it and at the end they say Earl. my liege and it's wrapped in yeah, a golden brick yeah it's a theme thing <laughs> oh, I love right? that it's uh <laughs> so we get there and we're you know I don't know what Gordon ordered because we made him go last because we just wanted to get our food before. and on the way over hey, Gordon, Gordon walked into a music video on the way over do you remember that were you too drunk oh, to remember that oh no Gordon just wandered into <laughs> some sort of photo shoot music video yeah for no fucking reason just yeah. wandered in and then you got a bunch of the cards that people on the street and you were trying to give those out you were like, you were like hey, oh yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, you I just was. thought you'd do that yeah and then Gordon's there and then he's there and the whole time I'm like texting my lady friend she's like how's Vegas I'm like I'm so fucking angry because <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sober I'm so sober, and they're and so we're fucked. so not. And I can't, can't, I can't catch up at this point. No. Because if I catch up at this no. point, one of us will die. We're going to die. We're going to die. So he finds the sandwich shop like a homing pigeon. He fucking yeah, finds the sandwich shop. And then Gordon, and then you so and there I sit we are. down with our sandwich. Right. So we're inhaling our sandwiches, and then Gordon sees, uh, uh, he's single at the time. Mm-hmm. So he sees some women, where he's like, oh, look at that. Couple and, of working we're like, girls, by the way. Couple of working girls. <laughs> And these girls were, this is the thing, this is where they were in the stage of their evening. They just got back from whatever having to abuse themselves, oh, yeah. you know, or let somebody else do it. And they're hungry. They just want to eat, eat something. They're and, on their and they just, They're just, on their whore lunch. Just forget what they just had to do, yeah. right, in this horrible stage yeah. of their life. There's a lot of, lot of uh, so they're travel size scope. Right. They're eating... <laughs> They're eating their sandwich, yeah. trying to forget their lives, and then Speaking here Russian. comes here comes Gordon. Speaking Russian. Hey, and they want nothing to do. With them. <laughs> nothing. They They're just want the They, don't they just care. want some nourishment. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And yeah. leave. And then Gordon, all we hear, we can't see hear exactly oh. what he's saying, but that he's doing what he's saying. And then he, and then you see his hands come up, and he goes, "Okay, yeah. well, I'm opening for Carrot Top." Yeah. <laughs> And you girls just fucked. Yeah, yeah I opened for carrot top. <laughs> Loud. And at this entire time, and walks potato away. salad in his mustache. And potato so salad in the mustache. Potato salad in yeah, his mustache. Yeah. Sits down, all like yeah. super full of himself, but also drunk. And, and like, he doesn't open for carrot top. No fucking idea. No, 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 no. no not at all. He just thought that all. was the name. He just drop. thought, oh yeah, you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> what is the thing that I could say to so you that you are going to regret more than anything else? And also, they. I don't think spoke English or weren't interested in speaking no, English. They were no, speaking no. Russian. Oh. No, like I say, they, they were They were not. They doing, were, it, was their de- it was their time off. They were doing the their clock. thing. Yeah. They are yeah. doing their thing. And so and so then uh, Clams, like, 
Clem's sobering up enough that he's going to go gambling, right? So he leaves yeah. us. So uh, now I'm taking care of Gordon. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck it. I have 80 bucks in my pocket. I just want to fucking play some slots or something. I don't give a <laughs> shit what I do. Yeah. I have to do something Vegas really. Exactly. So yeah. now we're walking through the Hard Rock Mall type thing. <laughs> and Gordon sees this lady with a prodigious uh, back end. Oh. And next to a very large man. Oh. And Gordon's like, yeah. Yeah, but he's so loud that I'm like, this guy's going to murder us. The dude turned around ready to kill him and just started laughing. That's how fucked Gordon was. That the guy turned around, he's like, yeah. And I get fucked up. <laughs> and then Gordon, I said to Gordon, I'm like, sit here. I put him on a bench. I'm like, sit here. I'm going in there to play slots. I don't care if you're here when I get back. And oh. I went in to play slots. I want some money. I was super excited. Then I lost some money. I was super bummed. And then and then I found him out there, and he's just like lying on a bench, just like staring. I was like, all right, let's go back. It's nine o'clock. And I'm like, let's yeah. go back to the hotel. So we go back to the hotel. We go back to the casino of the hotel. I figure now I've got him within range because I can't fucking carry this guy. Yeah. And and he so I start I put him in a slot machine. I give him some money. I'm like, just fucking press buttons. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then buddy. I'm playing <laughs> slots behind him. And a security guy comes over and goes, uh, sorry about you, sir. Is that your friend? And I look over and Gordon is fucking full on, <laughs> fucking asleep, <laughs> drooling, passed out on a fucking slot machine. He's like, uh, we can't have you. I was like, I know. I know. That's so the hardest I, place to pass is out. Life. I pull him over to the elevator and I fucking chuck him in the elevator. It's like 9.45 and I take him upstairs and I put him in one of the beds and I'm like, this is my bed. <laughs> I sleep right. starfish style. So, so then I, like, I arrive back at yeah, the room at this point. At like I think 1 o'clock. No, you were like 1 o'clock in the morning. You yeah. shut up late because you were doing well. Yeah, I was doing, I did okay, not, but I kept drinking. So I'm gooned. I stumbled my way through you the just hallway. Had your own but now... There's three of us in two beds, yeah. and I got to sleep with Gordon. Yeah, there's no fucking way. And at this point, I'm so angry. Like, cause he gets, there's no way I'm he's so gonna... fucking mad. Don't even come near me. I'm no, sleeping like I was shot at. I'm like lying starfish style. And I'm awake, because oh, I yeah. hear you come in, because you're all proud. Because you're like, yeah. track suits. Track suits. <laughs> I think you were up like 1100 bucks. You did well. Track no, I thought, you, it wasn't that much, but to you me You went to was. the Venetian That's or something. Yeah, I did. And I did. don't know where I ended up. And you were like doing well, and then Gordon's fucking out. Gordon's out because yeah. the booze kicked in. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I can hear, I'm awake enough to hear Calamus like examining the room, like, well, I can't sleep there. Uh, <laughs> like, 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 you fucking damn right you can't. Uh, damn it. So then, uh, then he ends up in the other bed. It. Then he ends up in the other bed. Oh. Yeah. At which point, Gordon wakes up and starts hugging him. Oh. And, he starts, and he's a strong man, you no, said. Yeah, he's trying to get spooned yeah, by he's Gordon. He's trying to get spooned by a giant like man. And behind, he's like right in my ears, like, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. So these guys Come are on. fucked. So in the morning, we wake up. Now I am still annoyed, but I have to drive us back to Los Angeles. But then yeah. I decide, all right, well, I'll drive. I'll drive the first little bit. Oh, no, Gordon will drive. The, I will make Gordon drive to punish him. I will make Gordon drive. Yeah. So we go and find breakfast uh, where I don't I don't know. Fuck where we were. What's that little town? Oh, breakfast? No, Earl of breakfast. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's what's that town that's outside of Vegas that like the last right, right before you're kind of done with Vegas. We oh. went to the st- I can't remember what it was. I can't remember. We can, I can't like, break I know what you mean. Though. I know, yeah. So we yeah. went there, we had breakfast, which was marginal, but it was food. It's something in our stomach. Gordon's hungover. <laughs> yeah. Clam's okay, but sleepy. But Gordon's yeah. fucking hungover. So I yeah. made Gordon drive, because I'm like, fuck you, dude. And yeah. so this is, uh, so Gordon's driving the rental car. I'm in the passenger seat, and Clam's in the back. And we're driving and driving, and then I, I start to become aware that we might not be going the right direction. <laughs> oh, no. Well, no, 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 no. It, it, no it, initially, you, you, he was driving, and then yeah. we both kind of took a snooze. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. But I had programmed the GPS. This is yeah. when you had a separate GPS, yeah. not on your phone, right? Right. So yeah. it was attached to the, the, the dash and yeah. the air freshener. <laughs> yeah, and and Gordon's like, I got it, I got it. Yeah. Okay, Tell program. Just fuck. follow the directions. Yeah. So we wake up. I don't know, half an hour later. Maybe yeah. We're miles off course. Yeah. Like miles forty off miles course. away. Yeah. The Mexican border. No, no, <laughs> we're not even. I think we're going north. I don't I think even at know. At this point, we were heading up the Sierra Madres or whatever the fuck we're yeah. doing. And we're like, look at the thing. It keeps saying turn around. <laughs> <laughs> did you didn't hear yeah, this? I don't know where we are, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. And so we pull over and we're like, fuck it. Pull in the McDonald's, we'll get some food, and I'll drive. Right? Yes. So we go and get food. We go and get food. We get our food. On the way out, 
I said to Gordon, give me the keys. And he throws them in the air. And I <laughs> shit you not, they land on the top of the drive through side. <laughs> That's like, 12 fucking, feet high. At least. That's 12 feet high. It, the the kidding, bar kidding. is only like three <laughs> inches wide. Yeah. It lands on it's the top. It's not possible. On the top. Yeah. With half it, of the keys dangling over. It, you couldn't have done it if you wanted you, to. You couldn't land that with a hundred tries. And it's literally the only time I've ever been mad at Gordon. And I was and beyond, like, at this time, I was now funny. I was like, eh, fuck it, doesn't matter We're like, anymore. you're <laughs> shitting us. And cars yeah. are trying to yeah. get through the drive. And he's Gordon's just like, jumping up trying to reach it. Why did and he so, throw him up in the air again? I don't know. Because he was like, passing to me. <laughs> and he thought it would be funny to throw them and 12 feet land, in the fucking air. They land on the parallel bar of... Luckily, that through. McDonald's happened to have the tallest employee with a big step ladder. So we have to go in, yeah. and you go in and just go, excuse me, our idiot friend. Yeah. This is how it starts. Yeah. Just threw our keys on top of your drive through Fucking minute balls working. Yeah. Half a and this guy gets a broom, and, can, yeah. and in addition to his long yeah. arm reach, gets it down. He gets our keys down, and you just threw uh, Gordon in the back seat and just shut up. I did Don't not say talk. a word. <laughs> I did not. We did not talk until we got just to seething. back. Once we saw uh, Los Angeles, I had calmed down. <laughs> but I literally the worst I've ever been. And then all Novak ever says to me is, "You did Vegas wrong," because that's all Gordon says to me. Right. That's all Kalam uh, says to me because I didn't get fucking destroyed by 7 p.m. <laughs> oh. There's me with my at this point my peak booze too. Like I was like at my heaviest uh. boozing. Wait, so like funny. I was a, yeah. I was in UFC boozing shape. <laughs> like I was ready to go all night. Like I was yeah. like, let's do some fucking bourbon. Let's do oh. tequila. Let's fuck this up. Nope. Five <laughs> Long Island iced teas and fuck bags drunk. <laughs> yeah. And this is the testament to how much I love that guy that I just find this funny. And yeah. Just the funny you, weren't, story. you weren't even that irritating. It was him that was irritating because the problem I said is like I said I said at one point in the text I go I'm walking thirty paces behind two grown men who are too drunk to look after themselves. <laughs> I'm stone cold sober. I guess you know how my nights go. <laughs> Just like one of yeah. those, like, I got dropped off at adult daycare <laughs> with two slow dudes who were crazy, <laughs> crazy grown up. Oh. Fuck, it was funny, That's dude. such oh. a funny image. It's the best. Like that, that was the that was the capper. That was exactly what the weekend was. Was just and that was also uh, that trip was where I lost some major role on something too. So I was so sour. Oh no! I was, all like, that I was like, fuck LA, fuck Las Vegas, <laughs> fuck it all. I want to go home. <laughs> Oh my god, fuck. That's Do you hilarious. remember that time I visited your place? You weren't there, but you remember that time I stayed in your place and I got that crazy allergic reaction? And I looked like oh. a Korean dude for like four days. <laughs> Did I ever show you those pictures? I do remember that. I don't you know what the fuck. I never, I never figured out what that was, and and I ended up. So I, I no, uh, no, I wasn't there, but I remember. Peter's lovely, and let's let's comedians hap- stay at his place a lot. And I and he stayed at your lovely place, and it was great. And then for Thank some reason, much. and I had a audition that week for a uh, I was down there to audition for something or to call back for something uh, it was an explosion what happened uh, it's just it's a knob don't worry knob okay. you're not broke okay you got your um, fucking knob broke <laughs> yeah um, and I was uh, down there to, I was yeah. specifically down there to do a call back for something right and then like day one I got this crazy allergic outbreak I don't know what it was I still don't yeah. know to this day what it was yeah but just like a full on like, like I had been fucking with shellfish and I had a problem with shellfish oh man and um and I don't. I took pictures of it. I don't know what. It, I don't know why to this day what happened. But it literally looked like I went on a first date with Chris Brown and said something wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it, it looked like I tried to fuck a beehive. Like I had this face. Like it just was not good. And um, and then yeah. And then I was just like taking Benadryls and so to the point where I I showed up at a gig and Eddie Del Sepp is like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and that was <laughs> when I did that thing with Eddie Pepitone. <laughs> I went to Flappers Comedy Club, and yeah. Eddie Pepitone, who, by the way, hopefully we'll have the podcast one day, is one of the, the greatest and nicest Hilarious. people, and such a funny comedian. So fucking funny. And he had this audience in, we were Flappers in Burbank, and he had this yeah. audience in, and like, Eddie's well known, um, but that particular crowd, half of them were like a state trooper's retirement party. Oh, great. Right. And so I'm in the green room, and Eddie's like, "What the fuck happened to you?" And I was like, "I don't know. I don't fucking know." But I look like this, and and Eddie's like, "We gotta use this." <laughs> I was like, "We do gotta use this." So Eddie's like, "Do you want to do a thing?" I was like, "Of course, I fucking want to do a thing." He's like, "So let's do a thing where there's a couch on stage of flappers in the back, right?" right. And Eddie's like, "Let's do a thing." Like we worked out this thing, and this is what it was. So Eddie, Eddie Pepitone's so fucking funny, and he does this thing where he start 
he, he goes, he's about five minutes into his set, and he goes, oh, ten minutes into his set, he goes, he goes, all right, all right, all right, is anybody in here an Eddie Pepitone fan? And, like, a bunch of people are, but then I go crazy. Like, I go, I'm in the, I'm in, like, the side. I go, yeah, ah, fuck, ah, fuck, I lose my mind, right? And he's like, he's like, oh, what's your name? What's your name? I go, my name's Eddie. My name's Eddie like you. My name's Eddie like you. And he goes, oh, okay, great. And I'm, like, doing it weird like something's up with me yeah right. and he goes he goes well would you like to be part of an eddie pepitone bit i'm like <gasps> and the audience doesn't know what's happening so he goes come up here on stage come up here on stage all right sit down and i come up and i have <laughs> i look like i look oh, and no. he's like sit in that, sh- that couch behind me and i'm gonna point to you when it's time to do a patented eddie pepitone bit and i'm like yeah that's great and i sit down i told him i was like a software engineer and I sat down behind him, and then the joke was, Eddie does another like three, and I'm just sitting on stage, right, just looking like an idiot. And I, he does about seven minutes. He goes, he goes, you know what? We're not gonna do it. And then I leave. <laughs> and then about ten minutes later, he's doing a headline set, right? About ten minutes later, he goes, you know what? Eddie, where are you? I go over here. He goes, come on back up. We're gonna do that bit. And I go, right. He goes, sit down there, and I'll point to you. And then I go, okay. And then everyone cheers and everything, because they cheered the first time. And then the second time, they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then uh, about five minutes later, he goes, you know what, Eddie? We're not going to do that bit. And I go, <laughs> stage. <laughs> and I sit down, and the third time, he goes, Eddie, where are you? You go, no, man. I'm changing my name. Fuck you in your hat. <laughs> the audience gets mad at me and mad at Eddie and just <laughs> mad at everyone. The audience has no idea what's going on. And I get up, I'm like, fuck you. And people are like, sit down, man. I'm like, go oh, fuck him. I'm fucking angry. And as oh, I'm man. leaving, because the joke was that I storm out. And as I'm leaving, all I hear is Eddie go, no, 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 no. That, his name's Simon. He's a comedian from Canada. He asked me for stage time. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking threw me. It was so fucking funny, dude. It was so funny because the audience literally, it was real Andy Kaufman shit. The audience had no idea what the fuck was going on. Oh, and man. they were just, they didn't know whose side they were on, but they were just hated both of us. <laughs> you know, sometimes, oh, sometimes you're at a gig and you hear uh, one of the comics or, or an MC just fire out like the perfect line that just destroys you. Yeah. Uh, I, I was uh, doing this movie in uh, uh, Scotland. Oh, yeah. And it was like a Canadian Scottish co-production so we got to go to scotland for like a week or something mm. and i worked it out that i was going to do a set the, the, the day i came in at um the stand in oh glasgow, in, uh, glasgow. Oh, fuck. so i get in and our flight is late so i literally had enough time to get, throw the stuff in the hotel room and the actress that i was working with here uh aaron carpluck who's great uh, she's like, so what are you? What are you doing? I said, I'm going to do a spot. I mean, I just got here, but I'm yeah. kind of, I have a spot. But she goes, I'll oh, come. Yeah. So we hop into a cab, and uh, you know, we're just ta- talking, and, you know, thick Scottish accent cab yeah. driver, and he goes, well, I can tell from the accent, you're not from here. Uh, what you doing? We all were both in uh, filming this. Uh, we're doing this movie. Ah, uh, what's a movie about? And we go, it's kind of this uh, romantic, uh, like, fishing, uh, the fisherman story. And he goes, ah, a romantic fishing story. If I saw that in the video shelf, I'd probably give it a pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, to already, Glasgow. people in this country are funnier than I am. Yeah. Yeah. Like the cab driver. Yeah. But I remember the MC that night who was this hysterical guy, and I, and I wish I could remember his name. It wasn't Joe Heenan, was it? I can't Because he's like, he is, did he do impressions and stuff? N- no, but he was just like glass. Joe, he looked like one of like uh, the Proclaimers kind of guy with those glasses like that. And it kinda, might be Joe, because know, Joe's, Joe's really like basically funny. a house MC at the Glasgow stand. It might be him. He's one of the funniest. It, if he's it is, so incredibly it, it, funny. It sounds like it is, uh, but he, it, oh my God, he's going through the crowd. And then you see this whole table of like blue haired older women like about <laughs> six of them yeah and he's like oh right, I, I go over here then he goes oh look at this so uh, <laughs> oh look at, so what do you ladies do run around the countryside solving mysteries <laughs> And I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. I, like for ten minutes, I couldn't. I, when stuff like that you know, hits, when somebody can fire out like the perfect line like that, it's like, oh my god. We were just watching some Norm Macdonald interviews. Uh, oh yeah, oh, last god. night on YouTube stuff. And oh my god, it was the one with Cor- Courtney Thorne Smith was B-O-R-E-D. on. With, yes, <laughs> Courtney <laughs> Thorne Smith is, Conan is on. Is on Conan. Yeah. Going in and she's promoting her film and it's with uh, Carrot, Carrot Top, Top Chairman right? of the Board, right. <laughs> right? Chairman of the Board. And first off, she she's like uh, she's like, oh, what's the name of the the film? And she's like, well, it's a little undecided. And then Norm just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know what you call it. Uh, 
If it's a carrot top, you can you can call it box office poison. <laughs> And she's dying laughing, right? And then they finally joke around a little bit yeah. more. And Conan's laughing, but Norm is stealing the show. Yeah. He's already been a yeah. guest. Like he's to the right of her. His yeah. time is already over, but he's destroying. <laughs> no, they kept him on and for they a kept him on. They <laughs> so then she finally says, "No, no. It, well, it's going to be called uh, Chairman of the Board." And and uh, Conan goes, "Yeah, what? You got you got something for that, you weirdo?" <laughs> and there's about a second and a half pause, and he goes. Yeah, but board is spelled B O R E D. <laughs> and oh my God, she couldn't breathe. Yeah, she couldn't. Murder. She's trying to hold yeah. back. It's absolutely yeah. it, The timing order. and everything was. Conan, couldn't, Conan was like buckled over. He could yeah. barely finish He's the so show. He's so funny. Like it was one of those things. Did you ever see one of? The, it was one of the last Conan late nights. Yeah. And uh, it was Gordon Ramsay and uh, Norm Macdonald oh, cooking. Really? And uh, at one point, <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's like trying to alpha Norm MacDonald, which you can't do. And at one point, he's, so he gets all mad. He goes, he goes, Norm, why are you doing that? You're not doing it right. And he goes, what kind of a man is a cook? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, kind of a man and it was a cook. just such like a fucking kick in the dick. And he wouldn't stop swearing, and Gordon wouldn't stop swearing, and Conan's just drinking the wine. He doesn't know what to do. But he's just confused. And Norm is just fucking manhandling both of them like it was just legitimately did not give a fuck but it, it was like, like you know? but it was like it, it was like it, he's taken down an aircraft carrier with a pea shooter right, you know, with, with right. just the Dude, line is so simple but it's just dis, dis destruction yeah. i love i love when you something when you get something like that out like i've had a few very few times in my life when i've had one of those very rare but like yeah. i had i've had a couple with hecklers like yeah. i don't i don't yeah people always think with comedians that we like we deal with hecklers like it doesn't have that much and malicious hecklers even more rare like yeah. people just drunk at a show that happens but yeah. that's that's part of our job right but like malicious hecklers people are trying to fucking submarine you that doesn't happen much no i did have this one woman and she um i had a, a comedian named colin sharp he'd been on the podcast lovely comedian great guy at the time he was opening for me and he was relatively new and um and it was at a it was a ski resort, and yeah. the rest of the bar had been sold out for the show, but there right. was this table of like thirty women and one dude, and it was there for her fortieth birthday. Right. And she's in the front, and uh, talking the whole show, right? Yeah. And then while while um like not a lot of things will piss me off because I'm like I fucking mm -hmm. just draw, roll off my back, but if you're shitty to my opener, especially if they're new, I don't like that. Because I'm like, look, no. they're, they're learning, man. Like, just fucking save it for me. I'll deal with it. Sure. Like, I don't give a fuck. Sure. I'm like an old whore. I'm like, ooh, a dick. <laughs> like, I don't give a shit. You know, like, at that point, like, I, don't, I don't fucking care. The money's showing up at the end. I don't give a shit. Like, that's where I'm at. But, like, they're all scared. Like, ah, dick. You know? And so uh, he's on stage. <laughs> I don't know why I went all normal. Hey, yeah, he's on stage. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he's on the stage, and um, they're just, she's singing happy birthday to herself and just drunk. And you could tell, like, I'm watching it, and I could see that the people at the table didn't like her. But they're there because it's free drinks. Why the fuck not, right? Sure. I've gone to weddings I don't want to go to. And, uh, <laughs> like, I bought you a fucking Tiffany vase. Anyway, where's the, I'm getting my money back. And, um, so he brings me up, and I go, and it was right after there was a video of a guy punching a kangaroo in the face that is shown up. Yeah. I don't know if you saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so the, it was full of Australians. And this big fuck off Australian. It looks like three Australians in one shirt. Like just a oh, fucking man. giant guy sitting in the back. And I start riffing on this. And that guy's losing his mind. Like he's like, he's like, <laughs> like it was like he was going to, he would have elected me prime minister of Australia if he yeah. did it. <laughs> and the whole audience, is, except this table here, they're not giving, she does not like that it's about me. And that like, I'm just shooting her, shooting them a joke once in a while. The table's laughing. She's not laughing. And I'm, and, and her and one of her friends. And I'm, I'm doing jokes and I'm kind of and then I started at that time the material that became as good as or better than which you can see at a link at the end of this special at the, at the end of this you can link to the special but um, there's a bunch of race material up front but sure. at this point the rest of the audience have paid attention they understood we're all on board it's going great right she's sitting there with a fucking sour look on her face and she's talking real loud I'm like hey um, I know it's your birthday I appreciate it um, but there's like a whole other part of the restaurant you can go to she's like I think I'll just sit right the fuck here and do what I want I was like Okay. Okay. All right. And she's literally this far from me, right? Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm on like yeah. a one foot stage. And I'm like, all right, I already don't like you because of what you've been doing, but I'm going to let it go. And I kept doing material. She's like, everyone here hates you. They're just laughing because they feel sorry for you. I'm like, all right. 
Okay, wow. that's not what's happening. <laughs> and then they're like, shut the fuck up, you fucking cunt. <laughs> like, I'm like, calm I'm down, giant Australians, man. man that's dumb. Like, I'm like, I'm like, you're about to start a war. You're not going to win, no. you 130-pound lady, because that's <laughs> nine guys in one suit. And then anyway, so it kept going, and finally she just kept going at me. And I said something which... I since kind of regret because I think it made her cry throw up. Um, oh. She said something. I can't remember exactly what she said. She's like, I think she's like, she's like, uh, she's like, we all fucking feel sorry for you. Nobody here likes you. And I was like, you're not good looking enough to be the impression of a cunt. And I was <laughs> like, right out of my mouth. And then she's like, what? And then all her table laughed at her. And then her husband, oh, who I didn't man. even know was there, stood up and zipped up his jacket. You better get the fuck off the stage. I'm like, what are you going to do? <laughs> it's like, turned around. I was like, I'm ready to fight a dude. I had a pony that tail at the time. Yeah. It was totally from world. And then bun, I was like, and, and he's just like, what the fuck? And then they left. And she's like, we're all leaving. And just her and one friend left. And then the rest of them stayed. And when she left, oh, I was like, great. you don't like her either, do you? And they're like, yeah. No. <laughs> we had a great fucking time. And then the guy threatened to murder me. Like, legitimately, a yeah, couple exactly. times. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he called he called the booker, who, like, the next day I got, like, three. Because then we went back um, to the room. And Colin Sharp had never seen Die Hard. And the only version <laughs> I could find online was Spanish <laughs> with English subtitles and then porn pop-ups all the time. So it was, like, legitimately, it was like, <laughs> it was like it was Spanish diehard with occasionally oh, just tits man. and then we were drinking old fashions because Colin fucking knows how to roll and it was the middle of winter right so it was around Christmas time so we were wow. like yeah it's fucking time and then the next day we're hung over shit and we go to and I keep getting these calls from the booker I'm like I'm not fucking answering this I don't know what this is. and then, I should preface this by saying at the end of the night the owner of the bar apologized to me he's like I'm so sorry we didn't kick them out and everything I was like yeah I get it it's a huge table yeah. they're paying a lot of money yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. you know it's 30 people eating and drinking for two hours it's gonna be a fucking ton of money I get it. I'm like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Everyone's buying me drinks. I'm like, fuck, we won. You know, we won. The next night, the next day, I get a call. And the booker, finally, I call him back. And the booker goes, first of all, before I say anything, I agree with you. You were in the right. Second of all, uh, you might want to be careful because this guy called me and threatened to murder you a couple of times. And I was like, why did you fucking answer the call? And he's like, because the next gig was like two and a half hours away. Right in the oh. in winter, right? Reachable for this guy. Yeah. So I said to him, I was like, I was like, so what happened? He goes, he called me. I'm gonna threaten. He's gonna beat the fuck out of you, and he didn't want to pay his bill. I go, well, he didn't want to pay his bill. He was paying the bill for the table. He didn't want to pay the bill. I get that. He's trying to figure out a way out, worm out his way out of the bill. All right. And I, I figure, I you know, don't get, don't get. But he's like, he's gonna. Punch. I said, look, if this guy wants to drive two hours and pay twenty bucks to punch me in the face, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, are you shitting me? If this guy's gonna drive two hours, so then we went to that gig. I dropped Colin off. I had a corporate to do about an, an hour away. Yeah. So I dropped Colin off before. I go into my corporate. I get back just in time to do the show. When I yeah. walk in, the show's going great. It's fucking great, right? Colin's murdering. Brings me up. I'm having a great one of those sets where you're like, oh man, everything's hitting, right? And, uh, oh, because the booker had also said, he's like, I've n let the cops know that this guy's... I was like, don't fucking worry about this, dude. It's not a fucking issue. Right. And uh, I'm on stage, and it's just relatively small. It's like a 60-seater. And as I'm on stage getting towards the end, two fucking cops show up. And I was like, oh, fuck, this dude's here, right? <laughs> and so I told the audience what was going on. And then they were all like, well, fucking get him! And I was like, oh, yeah, you okay. will. Because now you've hitler a crowd. They're on your side. They don't give a fuck, <laughs> yeah. man. And um, at the end of the set, like, it goes great and everything. At the end of the set, I go to the cops and go, is he here? And they go, who? And I go, the guy, and they go, oh, we just heard there was a show, and we just wondered. And I was like, that fucking pussy didn't even show up. Didn't even have the guts. Didn't even show up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, that was the only time I feel like I, I feel like I, I made a man's wife feel so bad he wanted to murder me. <laughs> oh, man. I think that's legitimate. Where are we at now? We're at an hour. We're at an hour? We're at an hour. We usually you know do what's do? random, but... Uh... You know what we're going to do is, uh, this is going to be the end of this podcast, but we're going to just... Do, you want to do more? Yeah, sure. We'll just do fucking I, more. And so... <laughs> I, I got nowhere to go. <laughs> the doors are locked. You can't leave. The only way out's the, the only window. Way out's <laughs> Damn window. Um, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back next week. I mean, it'll be moments for us. It'll be a whole fucking week for you. Yes, um, and we'll be please, wearing the same we'll thing. We'll be wearing the same thing. They already understand. That yeah, you know how it works. They know that I get drunker and drunker. They're like, how come every third ep every third week Simon's fucking hammered? <laughs> There's so much plan. <laughs> Um, uh, please like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast. Please share it with people. Uh, please follow P Peter. Where can they find you? Uh, at Peter Kalamas, both on Twitter and Instagram. The two easiest things. You got to look him up. Fuck. One of the funniest, best fucking dudes. You got albums out. You got specials out. You got shit people can see. Let's fucking... And Mikey? I'm around. Fair enough. There we go. He's so, we go. Good, at, he's so good at promotion, that guy. Yeah. You know, he's a real... Uh, he's I'll be real... at the Fairmont changing bed sheets if you need me Monday to Friday. So... Yeah. <laughs>
And Mike is saving up for another few dogs. Yeah. Five or six came more dogs. Here, he goes, I um, hope you like dogs. 17 dogs <laughs> came down from upstairs. 17. Yeah, dogs just showed up. And by the end of the show, two gave birth. Yeah. So there's now 19 dogs. One, he's like, he's like, all the dogs are great except for the hellhound. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, okay. There's that hellhound. one he's got that, that he comes hellhound. up. He's so happy to see it. And then he starts biting your finger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's my wife. That, okay. And then... <laughs> But that's how you treat. That's how you describe it when the dog does it. Oh, that, those are just love bites. No, no, that's not love bites. That's He's trying to bites. taste blood. That's bite bites. <laughs> trying to taste blood. That's bite bites. Um, thank you so much for watching the podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Um, uh, you can find extra bonus episodes on patreoncom slash King. There are a bunch of, but we just did a bunch of bonus episodes for the uh, from the 1974 basement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, so yeah, thank you so much uh, for watching us. Um, at the end of this video, there will be links you can click and specials you can watch. Um, goodbye from our brand new um, death murder studio <laughs> suicide <laughs> contemplation Su- room suicide studio suicide, suicide <laughs> studios that's what it is that, oh, now it's gonna think they're naked chicks mm. with like tattoos uh, <laughs> <laughs> Greenwood suicide I don't know fucking what it is goodbye uh, that's what's wrong this week <laughs>